Mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being moved. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. Cause God, we believe. Yes, we can see. Wonders are still what you do. We are here.
worship you, Lord. we may feel, we can always take refuge in God's presence and love. What is God's presence according to the Bible? The presence of God inhabiting his people, which means that we are now part of a new temple, with Jesus being the center of it all, or as Paul puts it, the cornerstone. God is presence throughout all scripture. God has always been there and will always be there. We just have to look for him. Let's now incline to the ear of God in prayer. Father, we pray that you will visit us and make your presence known in our lives more this day and beyond. Give us the faith to believe that you can change our world through prayer and through the acts of love and compassion. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to cultivate the presence in our lives. We choose to partner with you for transformation in our hearts. Moreover, Father, take away any lukewarmness in our hearts and fervently set us on fire for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week's message ended in a pretty dark place. Israel had to fight a bloody civil war that came about over a terrible act that will make even the writers of CSI blush. Some of you may have wondered, where is God in all this? What does this have to do with Jesus? If so, don't worry. There are good questions to ask whenever you read scripture. The great British preacher, Charles Spurgeon, had an intern preach one day at his church. And the intern preached from the book of Ezekiel. Afterwards, the intern asked, how was the sermon? Spurgeon told him, just a fine job, but had made one mistake. The young preacher asked, what was it? There was no Christ in your message, son. We preach Christ here at New Park Street Church. The intern was shocked. But sir, he replied, I was preaching from the book of Ezekiel. Spurgeon responded, Son, until you have, and moreover earnestly, found Christ in Ezekiel, you will not share my pulpit again. Today, we are going to look at two passages of Scripture and 
more, which were where we find Jesus, are not just in a figurative or a metaphorically sense, but in a very literal way. The preeminent story to look at is one passed over when we look at Gilead, the story of his call to the judge in Israel. In Judges 6, 11 through 27, Gideon had a long interaction with a character referred to as the angel of the Lord. This is a character who showed up through the Old Testament, for example, in Genesis 18, Exodus 3, or in Judges 13 through the birth of Simon. So who is this angel of the Lord? First, let's consider his appearance. He doesn't seem to have the appearance of the angels we encounter elsewhere in Scripture, such as the angels who have appeared to the shepherds and proclaimed, Fear not, Luke 2 and 10, or any of the angels John see in Revelation 10, for example. It's not until verse 22 when the angel vanishes that Gideon realized the scent of the angel otherness. Another thing to consider is the name of this angel. It's the angel of the Lord or the Lord himself speaking. In Gideon's interaction in Judges 6, we read both that the angel said, verses 12 and 20, and the Lord said, verses 14, 16, 23, 25. In verse 14, the heavenly guest is identified as the Lord himself, who was sending Gideon as Israel's deliverer. Exodus 3, 12, Isaiah 6, 8, and 9. The strength Gideon possessed was the promise of the Lord's presence with him. Here we see God's presence appearing in the response to his people's cries. Judges 6 and 7. As Gideon is wrestling with his call, he understandably wants to know for sure who is calling him. Verse 17. He asks for a sign and prepares an offering to God. Verses 18 and 20. And it is at this point that the angel of the Lord disappears. Verse 21. Getting instantly recognized that it is not an angel, but God, and proclaims, Elias, O God, the Lord. For now I have to see the angel of the Lord face to face, to which God confusedly responds, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Verses 22 and 23. The face of the angel does not bring death, but the face of God does. Exodus 33 and 20. What is this proper response to an encounter with God other than to worship him in spirit and in truth? And that is the Gideon proceeds to do. He builds an altar to God and offers sacrifice to him and tear down the altar to the false god of Baal. Judges 6, 24 through 28. Today is a great time to thank God for his presence in that dark time that you have faced in your life. With God's abiding love, he entered our dark place and brought us through with his love for each and every one of us. So what does this mean that when we find God's presence, Right at the heart of judges visiting his people during one of the darkest moments of their history. It means that God's concern for his people was always there. From the beginning, his desire has always been to see them through the right relationship with him. At peace with God and with one another. No matter how dark things may be in our life, God is still present. John 1 and 1 begins the gospel with these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and with him was not anything made that was not made. In him was life, and life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 1 through 5. God was working all alone to protect, deliver, and bring peace to the people of God. Even in their very darkest of times, he was present. And that is still true today. One moment in the presence of God can change many things. See you next Sunday. A new sermon series will start entitled Creature of Habit. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ, that together you may one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you.